Ibn Tufail, born in 1101 and died in 1185. Ancient Greek, Persian and Indian science and philosophy first entered the Muslim world during the 8th century and found their finest expression in the works of Al-Kindi and Al-Razi in the 9th century and in that of Al-Farabi and the Ikhwan al-Safa, the Brethren of Purity, in the 10th, culminating in the works of the great Neoplatonist Ibn Sina in the 11th century, as the philosophical sciences gained popularity across the Muslim world and began to challenge the traditional Islamic worldview. The formidable figure of Al-Ghazali emerged during the latter part of the 11th century to launch a blistering attack on the Neoplatonic school of Ibn Sina and Al-Farabi. Al-Ghazali's intellectual assault on the Neoplatonic edifice, as developed by his acclaimed Tahafut al-Philosopher, the refutation of the philosophers, struck a major blow against the philosophical thought in general, and Neoplatonism in particular, and as expected, his successful repudiation of philosophy elated the Asharites and the Hanbalites who vehemently opposed Neoplatonic thought but it seriously undermined the progress of philosophical thinking in the Islamic world. When philosophy was in full treatment in the Islamic East, it found a warm welcome in Al-Andalus, in the Islamic West. As a result, Islamic philosophy flourished in Muslim Spain during the 12th century thanks largely to the efforts of great European Muslim philosophers like Ibn Baja and Ibn Rushd, but it was in the works of Ibn Tufail that Islamic philosophy found a refreshing, innovative and powerful expression, which subsequently exerted considerable influence on European thought and culture. Abu Bakr Muhammad ibn Abd al-Malik ibn Muhammad ibn Tufail, known as Abu Baysa in the Western world, was born in Ghuadix, in present-day Wadiash, in Islamic Granada. That's in Spain, that is. About a decade before his birth, Granada was annexed by the Almoravids, a North African dynasty which gained control of Spain in 1086, following more than half a century of political volatility and social unrest in that country. Founded by the charismatic North African Islamic leader, Yusuf ibn Tashfin, the Almoravids, were at the time urged by the Muslim world's most prominent scholars such as Abu Hamad al-Ghazali to move into Muslim Spain and restore peace and security there. By the time Ibn Tufail was born, the Almoravids had reunited the entire country under the leadership and established much-needed peace and prosperity there. During this period of stability, young Ibn Tufail completed his early education in Arabic, the Quran, and the traditional Islamic sciences before pursuing mathematics, medicine, literature and philosophy. He received advanced training in these subjects in Cordova, Seville, and most probably in Toledo, which at the time was one of the world's most renowned centres of learning and scholarship. As a student prodigy, Ibn Tufail excelled in both the scientific and philosophical sciences and received instant recognition for his mastery of mathematics, medicine and philosophy. And during this period he became highly versed in the philosophical discourse of Ibn Baja, who is widely considered to be the founding father of Andalusian philosophy. A fiercely rationalistic thinker, Ibn Baja attempted to revive and popularise the philosophical thoughts of great Muslim thinkers like Al-Farabi in the Islamic West. And although Ibn Tufail disagreed with many aspects of Ibn Baja's philosophy, he was nonetheless heavily influenced by the latter's ideas and thoughts. And to a great extent, he is considered to be a natural successor of Ibn Baja, in the same way that Ibn Rushd is regarded in turn as his successor in the intellectual history of Islamic Spain. The philosophical sciences aside, Ibn Tufail also excelled in medicine and surgery. He was such a popular medical practitioner that he established his own clinic, despite the deteriorating political situation in Granada. Following the death of the Almoravid ruler Ali ibn Yusuf in 1143, 
political chaos and social anarchy again returned to Islamic Spain, prompting the neighbouring Christian principalities to reorganise their forces and launch fresh incursions into the Islamic territories. Amid the ensuing chaos, there suddenly emerged another powerful Islamic dynasty in North Africa. Founded originally by Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Tumart, a charismatic North African Islamic reformer, the al muhads carved out a vast empire under the able leadership of Abdul Mu'min, who moved swiftly to establish his rule across all the territories which were once ruled by the Almoravids. At the time, Ibn Tufel was in his late 40s and busy practicing medicine in Granada. But after Abu Yaqub Yusuf al Mansur ascended the Al Muhad's throne, he came to hear about Ibn Tufel's skill as a medical practitioner and arranged for him to be brought to the Al Muravid court. Educated in Arabic literature and poetry at Seville, Abu Yaqub was a wise and learned ruler who encouraged intellectual and literary pursuits at his luxurious court in Marrakesh. Indeed, he even recruited some of the best Andalusian writers, poets and philosophers to his court. And Ibn Tufel was one such intellectual who served him as a physician, secretary and advisor. The two men became such good friends that they frequently engaged in lengthy discussions on the finer points of philosophy, theology and literature. Like Abu Yaqub, Ibn Tufel was also in the habit of recruiting some of the finest scholars and thinkers of the time, to the court in Marrakesh. On his arrival at the court, the al muhad ruler, Abu Yaqub, questioned the young philosopher concerning the nature of creation and asking him whether he believed in the eternity of the universe. As Ibn Rushd hesitated to respond, the experienced Ibn Tufel intervened and answered the monarch's question in a philosophically neutral way. Whether the universe was eternal or a finite creation of God, was a contentious philosophical point, which was hotly debated by the Muslim philosophers and theologians alike. Considering that the Al-Muhads vehemently rejected the notion of the eternity of creation, and instead championed the Ghazalian view that the universe was a creation of God, young Ibn Rushd hesitated to answer Abu Yaqub's question, but Ibn Tufail's timely interjections saved the day for him. Later, the Al-Muhad ruler conducted extensive philosophical discussions with Ibn Rushd and expressed his satisfaction with a young philosopher, whom he considered to be both gifted and erudite. He then awarded him with a high-ranking government post, working under Ibn Tufail's supervision. During this period, Ibn Tufail not only became Ibn Rushd's mentor and guide, but also helped him to polish his understanding of the finer points of Islamic philosophy. And theology. In addition to this, he encouraged Ibn Rushd to write his famous commentaries on the works of Aristotle, which later earned him the coveted title of the commentator throughout the Western world. Unlike Ibn Bajah, Ibn Tufail was not a pure rationalist, nor did he subscribe to the philosophical theology of Al Ghazali, even though he was well acquainted with both points of view. As a philosopher, Ibn Bajah emphasised the importance of rationalism in understanding the nature of creation as well as the attainment of individual spiritual fulfilment, which he claimed was attainable intellectually without the need for sensual experience. But influential Sufis like Al-Ghazali disagreed with this view. He argued that spiritual fulfilment achieved through mystical experiences was far superior to the spirituality acquired through rational means. Ibn Tufail was intimately acquainted with this philosophical-theological dichotomy and thus adopted a philosophical position which sought to harmonise these two conflicting views. The philosophical synthesis he formulated between the peripatetic thought of Al-Farabi and Ibn Sina on the one hand and Al-Ghazali's mystical philosophy on the other found its most profound and enduring expression in his world-famous novel Risalahi ibn Yaqdan, the tale of the living son of Vigilant. Perhaps inspired by Ibn Sina's book of the same title, 
in this pioneering fictional account of Ibn Tufail, explain how a child born in a desert island located in the Indian Ocean slowly acquired new skills, improved his knowledge and gained the experience to adapt to his new environment. As he grew older and matured, his understanding of life, its meaning and its purpose increased until he was able to think and reason philosophically before going on to experience mystical union which is the highest spiritual position attainable in conventional Sufism. Later, he came into contact with a group of people who lived on a neighbouring island and discovered that they lived by a revealed religious code. And his interaction with them enabled him to understand and appreciate the true nature and purpose of divine revelation, Wahi. But when he attempted to explain to the locals the full meaning and significance of divine revelation, they showed little interest in acquiring such knowledge. The lack of interest in such matters eventually convinced him that everyone was not necessarily the same, for the majority of people were only too happy to lead ordinary lives, while others, like him, were very keen on pursuing philosophical matters in order to develop a better understanding of life and of creation. Before leaving the island, he recommended that the people who wished to lead their lives in accordance to the laws and precepts of the religion should be allowed to do so, without being forced to engage in any form of philosophical debates or discussion. He returned to his own island convinced that respect, tolerance and understanding were the key to survival and coexistence in this hugely diverse world. Through the life of this fictional character, Ibn Tafail tried to explain that the exoteric, Zahiri way of the ordinary believer was as valid as the esoteric, the Bhatani path of the Sufis. In other words, all the believers, irrespective of whether they worshipped in the mosques, lodges or sanctuaries, were in his opinion seeking the one and the same truth. Even Al-Ghazali acknowledged this fact when he said that the philosophers were also seekers of truth, albeit only unintentionally. In short, Ibn Tufail believed that in reality there is no conflict between reason and revelation. Thus in his Risala, he attempted to reconcile some of the most complex and intractable philosophical, mystical and theological controversies which have been raging in the Muslim world for many centuries. Although written in the 12th century, this pioneering philosophical novel later inspired generations of famous Western thinkers and writers, such as Cervantes, Gratian, Schocher, Simon Oakley and Gottfried Leibniz, who imitated his unique literary style and did so without acknowledging their main source of inspiration. This was most certainly the case when the great French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who was inspired to pen his Emile by Ibn Tufail's Risala, the same was true for John Locke, whose An Essay Concerning Human Understanding was heavily influenced by Ibn Tufail's philosophical ideas and thoughts. The Risala was first translated into Hebrew with an explanatory commentary in 1349 by Moses ben Joshua of Narbonne. The Englishman Edward Pocock then published the Latin version under the title Philosophus Autodidactus, or the self-taught philosopher, along with the original Arabic text in 1671 at Oxford. This book was then translated into English, Dutch, Russian, Spanish, German and other Western languages. Soon it became so popular in Europe that, during the Age of Enlightenment, it inspired Daniel Defoe to pen his famous novel Robinson Crusoe in 1719. In addition to the Risala, Ibn Tufail composed scores of other treatises on philosophical, astronomical and medical topics. Indeed, as an eminent astronomer, he helped his students and associates Abu Ishaq al Bituruji al Petragius to review aspects of Greek astronomy, including the writings of Ptolemy. After serving as a royal physician to Abu Yaqub Yusuf for nearly two decades, Ibn Tufail finally retired in 1182. Ibn Rushd, his student and colleague, replaced him as physician of the Al-Muhad ruler. 
Three years later, this great European Muslim philosopher died at the age of 84 and was buried in Marrakesh, which is in present-day Morocco.